this is Rachel from Two Crazy Campers, and we're here at the 2023 Florida RV Super Show in Tampa. And one of our subscribers, Annette, hey Annette, actually asked if we could find some trailers that were under 3,000 gross weight. So we're actually going to bring you five different campers, Annette. We hope that one of these might actually fit your needs. So we are looking for campers under 3,000 gross weight. And we're going to start with this one, the 2023 Coleman Rubicon 1200 RK. Let's take a look at some of the statistics on this one. We got 13 and a half feet, seven foot height. Dry unloaded weight is 1,682 pounds with a cargo weight of 1,318. That is a significant cargo weight. We got a hitch weight of just 191 pounds has a 21 gallon freshwater tank and a 34 gallon gray tank no bathroom slash back black tank okay so let's take a look at this one's price the msrp is nineteen thousand and sixty two dollars but the sale price today is fourteen nine ninety five definitely a reasonable entry level price so you're going to step up and this is going to transform into a bed You've got a little bit of shelf storage over here. Some storage up here. Over here we have a little bit more storage. Some storage down here. We do have a fireplace, which is really nice. And you do have um, an indoor air conditioner. You've got some plugs up here. But yes, there's something definitely missing. And that is a sink in here or some sort of cooking device. Let's see if it's outside. Okay, we're gonna start off on the outside. Obviously we have our door here. We do have a screen door. Right here is our shaker box for our air conditioner. I can tell you right off the bat, since this thing is running, I don't like the fact that the water is dripping here and that's gonna run right down your laminate. Uh, we do have an outlet right here. And again, you got your water dripping down and look at how close to where this is landing that you have your outlet. Over here, we do have a suburban griddle. I love the fact that we're getting like a Blackstone style griddle, much better than having a little uh, stove top. So over here, we have our Everchill refrigerator, and this is gonna be a 12 volt fridge, little bit of a freezer area. We've got some more storage over here. Here we have the sink that Rachel was looking for. Some more storage for all of our pots, pans. There's our electric cord down there. We've got our outdoor shower hose. Here's some of our uh, tank stuff. Over here, we have our 30 amp service. Here's gonna be our shower hookup. We've got our city water connection here, fresh water fill. Look at this, over here we have our cable piece. We do have a nice big window so you can get some nice light inside. And then down here, we have a lot of storage for this little tiny unit. Take a look at the amount of storage you have there. So up here in the front, we do have a single propane can, but you know what? This is a small unit. You don't need more than one. We have our battery, all of our hookup stuff over there. It does have a place for solar down there. And here we do have a manual jack, but here's the thing. This thing's got 193 pounds of tongue weight. So like you don't really need to have like an electric jack for that. No sense to have it you're gonna be able to pick this thing up by yourself and just move it around. Okay, pros and cons, what's your con? My con is no form of a bathroom. There's nothing, no bathroom. It's a little unit, it's not supposed to have a bathroom. Hey, they found a way for me to cook and they found a way for me to rinse off things in a sink. They could find me a bathroom in here. Okay, what about your pro? My pro is probably going to be the fireplace. Never thought about having a fireplace in a unit this small, but how beautiful, something to look at. I love it. Okay. What about you? Okay, so what's my con? Uh, let's see. My con's gonna be that shaker box. I like yeah. the shaker box. It's leaking I though. do not like the way it's positioned. You got water leaking out and it's literally coming down 
right next to an outlet. I'm looking at it right over here. You probably can't see in the background. It's just pooling over there on the wheel well. So bad placement for that shaker box. Extend it out a little bit more. You absolutely could have extended that out and not have it like right up against the sidewall because you have your wheel well there anyway. So that could have been extended out. As far as pros, there's a lot of headroom in this thing. Yeah, it's there, very there's spacious. There's a lot of room in here. It, you know, has got a significant amount of weight as far as being able to add stuff in there. I mean, what did we have? We had 1,300 pounds of cargo weight. In a unit this small, I think you're going to be hard pressed to fill it with 1,300 pounds. And the price is right. Okay, we're going to continue our hunt for four more trailers with less than 3,000 pounds gross weight. Okay, continuing our hunt for five RVs under 3,000 pounds gross weight. We're gonna take it number two. It is gonna be the Luna Rover. So this one has an MSRP, I'm looking down there, 28,771. Uh, sticker price for the show, 27,326. Reasonable. Here's the specs. So four foot six inside, five foot nine width, and then a uh, floor space of uh, six foot by 10 in six foot 10 inches. So plenty of room inside. Exterior height, seven foot, 15 le foot in length, seven foot in width. So we've got a weight range of 1775 to 1850 with a tongue weight of 260 pounds. Gross vehicle weight only 2200. Only problem is it only has a carrying capacity of 350 pounds. Okay, so let's check out inside. There's a lot of room in this. There guy. is a lot of room in this. Okay, so it looks like that's going to take up the whole floor. Let's let's take a look at this and open this up. So that is going to probably unfold. Oh, here we go. And then yes. that one it would unfold as well. And now the whole space. And so now you have plenty of sleeping room for the whole thing. And look at that just revealed. So you have a shaker box down here, which I think you would absolutely love because that means that shaker box is gonna be blowing right on you. I know where you will be sleeping. Yes, I'm gonna be sleeping on that end. Now and then that side's got a, a fireplace. fireplace. There is our converter box. We got a nice television entertainment system. Up here, let's take a look at some of that storage. Nice, nice little bit of storage of over here. And again, for what we're looking at, you know, I know it's not super fancy, but plenty of room. Okay, we got some storage over here. Okay, and then, nice little table here. We've got some cup holders, some lights up there, speakers. Does this have any storage? Oh wow! Yes, it does. Look what we just uncovered. Okay. So wait a second. So you were like, basically like your table for eating is also your toilet. I do like the fact that there's a toilet. I don't know if I'm gonna want it like right here though. This, I'm, I plan on sitting here. Toilet or no toilet though? I mean toilets, toilet all day long. But this is, I guess, you know, where are they gonna put it? But this is kind of a funny place for a toilet. Let's head outside. Okay, we're gonna start off right here in the back. We've got a nice two burner stove over here and a little bit of a storage area over here. Nice size sink, storage up here, another some storage over there. We do have a nice little microwave, um, a touch of storage underneath your sink. And then we do have a nice refrigerator kind of thing over here. What's nice about this is you can pull this out and put it into your car or your truck. More like a cooler unit, which I actually like. So up here we do have a rollout awning. It's nice, I mean, it's a manual awning, but it's, it's a nice feature to have. Over here we have some LED lights right over your light. Uh, we do have some LED lights down here on your wheel wells to let you know where you're at. And then we have our little door over here. I like that there's two doors to this. Yeah. Gonna get some nice breeze if you're camping in Florida. So let's take a look at up front. First of all, we do have a manual jack, but again, this is a lightweight unit, so that's perfectly fine. And here is the piece for our cassette toilet. Okay, pros and cons for number two on our list. My con is gonna be that this unit will forever be number two in my heart. And that is because there is a place to go number two right underneath my table where I'm going to eat my food. So I don't know. I, I'm glad for a toilet. Don't get me wrong. I love me a toilet, but I don't know if the placement of that toilet is something that I'm going to want to be that close in proximity to, because here's the thing. That's also where I'm going to lay my head. The way that you have to sleep because the air conditioner and the fireplace is in such a way. I am going to like be laying right under where I pee and poop. So I don't know about that one. You could turn from side to side. I, uh -huh. 
So next on our list for RVs under 3,000 pounds is the Free Solo Romo. So right away, I love this layout. I love the fact that you have a really nice seating area. You can have a nice dining room table. And then at night, it really does transfer into a great big size bed. I love that. Over here, you have a sink, and actually, it's a good size sink. We've been seeing like airplane bathroom sinks in these things, so I like this decent sized sink. You have a nice um, air conditioner. There's some storage underneath the sink. Then you've got a wet bath, which is not my favorite thing, but I do like having a bathroom, so that's very important. So And you're not eating on top of your toilet. Exactly. I don't want to eat on my toilet, okay? Um, so I'm five seven and a half and I am pretty much just fitting. So definitely Joe is probably gonna hunker over a little bit in order to utilize this, or he's going to sit on the the toilet in order to shower. Now I will say that this is a, a plastic toilet and it's even a little bit teetery, but beggars can't be choosers right i'm glad that we have a toilet now moving over here you've got a really nice two burner stove and you have a microwave i love that we're seeing more units switch out the useless oven for a microwave i can actually utilize over here you've got we can open it you have the like refrigerator the it's backwards yeah it's kind of funny except for it'll probably be easier to load it when you're coming in the trailer You've got a little bit of storage up here, which is nice, and also storage here in the armrest going out the door. And I like this place for my shoes. Looking here at the brochure, the price is $16,495 down from the MSRP of $24,546, which again is a great little entry level price for people who are just starting out. So they're gonna look at the front of the Free Solo Romo. Right up here, we have a nice rounded cap. I love that it's all rounded. Uh, I like the color of this with all the decals, but again, these are decals, so you're gonna have to make sure you're maintaining them, otherwise they're all gonna peel off. Coming down here, we do have a manual jack but the thing is is this is not a very heavy trailer so we're not gonna worry about that too much a single propane can which for this unit is probably more than enough and then we have a battery tray over here so over here we do have a fresh water connection right here uh, we've got some solar down here there's our heater there is our water heater down there with an outdoor shower as well as a city water connection and then of course our 30 amp down here is going to be our sewer connections right up here at the front cap of the rv and also the gross weight on this one is a little bit over the 3000 at 3300 but that is if you're loading it in the dry weight is just over 2000 pounds so that really fits into where we're looking for because again, I don't think anybody's gonna load over a thousand pounds inside of this unit. Now we do have some manual stabilization jacks and there is a small trailer hitch down here in case you're pulling something behind your trailer. Now over here in the back of the RV, we do have a little bit of storage underneath. The only problem is this is kind of narrow to get in considering how deep it goes. So you may need a small child to really climb in there or you're just gonna have to put long skinny things in there. And then finally, we do have some all-terrain uh, tires on here. They're 235, 75, 15s. So what are your thoughts on this one? Okay, so this is a great unit. I actually really like this. I think it's very affordable. I love the colors. And in fact, we were talking to the dealer earlier and all the models are in, you know, have all the different colors. So there's like navy blue, there's a pretty silver, and this red is absolutely stunning. So I really like that. Uh, I think that that's a pro because it's very visually beautiful. Con. Con for me is the shakiness of that plastic toilet. I really don't have a lot of confidence. I understand it's a wet bath and I'm thankful for it. However, I'm not sure how long it's going to last. And also it's very short. So you would have to really just hunker over every single time or sit down to use it. It's also a small RV. And as we're seeing, a lot of these small RVs don't even have a bathroom right. at all. So, okay. For me, uh, we're going to start off with the con and that is going to be, there's not a lot of windows in this. No, there's You're not. You're kind of locking yourself inside, which honestly we like, Yeah. <laughs> you know, when I a think about cave. our house, like we want it like a bat cave, leave all of our hurricane shutters on. But when you go camping, you want to be able to park, see outside, and you really don't have a whole lot of windows here. You have a small one over there, but it would be nice if the front cap had like a big, like night view. Yeah. Uh, as far as a pro. 
I like that everything is inside. Your kitchen is inside, your bed is inside, and you can stand up in there. So a lot yes. more headroom than some of the other units. So I really like the um, dining room area slash bedroom of this model. It's up nice and high, very spacious. I think that they really did a good job situating the furniture in this thing. Let's go find a couple more. Okay, so number four is actually the camper that Annette um, requested, and that is, it's the new camp barefoot this thing is cute as it can be on the outside i know why you want to look inside of it so the interior is absolutely adorable i love it so much look at how many windows that you have you really don't feel confined somebody was else was just in here saying like a lot of times these pods really make you feel claustrophobic and you don't feel like that in here look at this cute little curtain this little outfit reminds me of lucy and desi in the long long trail Trailer, right only it's a short little trailer so you've got uh, a nice Dometic stove top two burners over here you've got a beautiful sink right there down here it looks like a refrigerator more like a dorm fridge you've got some really cool doors nice storage all around this reminds me of the medicine cabinet in our old house when we were growing up this is really cute these little bays that you have not lots of nice cubby holes all over the top and lighted too which is really nice you do have a fan up on the top you've got some plugs back here there's plugs over here you've got beautiful little reading lights even some pockets nice little cubby space there and then let's take a look at this bathroom, which we are really thankful that we have one in this size unit. And you've got a decent amount of headspace. I mean, obviously Joe's gonna have to hunker over a little bit. It's a wet bath. Or sit in the, on the toilet, which is fine. This is a plastic toilet, but I will say it feels like it's in there. Sometimes they're a little bit jiggly and this one feels really good. I love how you have the toothbrush holder right here. How cute is that? And you have a nice little sink space with um, the ability to have a shower. Really nice. So taking a look at the outside, we have some beautiful tires here with the nice little hubcaps to give it that vintage look. Over here on the side, we do have an outlet so you can plug things in on the outside. Looking up here, we do have some indicator lights. That's really nice. And take a look at this front glass that you're at night, you could be looking out at the stars. Over here in the front, look at this cute little place that you can have two propane tanks and a spare tire. While well, they have thought about everything and they are definitely utilizing the space well. We have a manual jack, but of course these are light trailers, so that is perfectly fine. Two inch ball, and we can see here the gross weight on this comes right in at 3,000 pounds. Coming down the side, take a look at this. Again, all of these windows, how they all pop out, you're gonna get really nice airflow. I love the barefoot logo. And look at this design they have on here, very, very nice. Down here we have our heater. Looks like we've got a little bit of stuff for our sewer connection in here. Once again, these beautiful hubcaps. Here is our 30 amp. And then down there is going to be our drain for our black tank. A Little bit more storage down here. And look at this, the whole back is just gorgeous. Like it just screams vintage. Okay, thoughts on this one? Oh my goodness, I love it's this gorgeous. so stinking much. It's got like all of the playfulness of a little pod, but you don't feel claustrophobic in it. It is adorable, cute. I mean, you want it to look vintage and sassy. And I feel like this just looks sassy from the paint job to the little details that really like brings you back to camping in the 40s. I love it. Pros and cons, give me a pro. Okay, the pro is definitely the shower toilet combo. I love the bathroom in this. And even though it's a, a wet bath, that toilet is on there, man. That I, It does not feel jiggly at all. It feels like it's very, very well made. So I really enjoyed that. Um, if I was gonna come up with a con boy this is a hard one if i'm really going to laser in on a possible con i'm going to say the refrigerator that refrigerator it's, it's like a dorm fridge i'm not sure how cold a dozen eggs and a 12 pack of beer and i don't know if it's even going to keep that cold really so i think that that's probably the drawback but i i have coolers i can pack a cooler because there's plenty of storage space in here as well okay so for me the pro is going to be the way they've utilized all the space in here right down to the front two propane cans, the spare tire, everything fitting in that thing. Everything looks nice and sleek. It screams luxury. It really does. Absolutely. But that brings us to the con. 
my con's the price. $48,000. But I have a feeling you talk about like reselling this thing. You are, I don't think you're ever going to have a problem no. reselling it. Absolutely. It is gorgeous. gorgeous. Unit. Yeah. yeah. Really gorgeous unit. So that is definitely going to be my con, but overall, I think it's a really nice unit. We got one more to find. Okay. So number five on our list of under 3,000 pounds gross weight. I'm already in love with this one just looking at the outside, especially when I saw this one's coming in with a GVWR of only 2,500 pounds. But this is going to be the TLRV Rove Light 14 LEV. Let's go inside. Okay, we're going to start right here. Rachel's favorite. We got a booth. I love this little dinette. We have a booth that becomes a bed. So you could bring the kids or your grandchild if you want. Because Rachel's sitting on another bed that we're going to show you in a minute. While we're over here though, look at this. We got some storage over here. There's our, our hot water tank right down there. We got a sink up there. And obviously that's a piece for our outdoor shower. Look at right here. We have a heater fireplace. A little bit of storage down here underneath. We've got an ever chill refrigerator. That's gonna be a 12 volt fridge. So I love my 12 volt. Uh, we do have in a double induction cooktop up here. We've got a little bit more storage. We've got a nice little shaker box AC over here. We've got some storage right here. Some more storage down here. And is this what Rachel wants? Yes, Yay! it is. Oh, that's nice. So we've got a nice little wet bath in there. We're gonna let Rachel climb in there. Looks like we've also got some Renology uh, solar panels there to go in there. Okay, so I am five seven and a half, and I am touching the ceiling with my hat but for this guy. Wet bath. It's designed a wet to bath. be sitting down. Yep. So we're gonna be sitting down. Toilets on here, good. And I like having this little bit of like counter space inside of the bathroom pod. This is really nice. So on the other side of the trailer is this nice sized bed. Very, very comfy. Plenty of room for me and for Joe. Of course, the bed is positioned sideways. So if you have to use the bathroom in the middle of the night, you're gonna have to climb over your friends. It's, it's a little short lengthwise. So like I may have to curl up a little bit, but again, this is a tiny little RV. And this is gonna go up during the day if you just like a little bit more space in here and it turns into a couch, which is really, really nice. Let's take a look at the outside. So we're gonna start off right here while we're here at the door. This one comes in with an MSRP of 43,239. The show price is 34,995 and again, 2,192 pounds. Coming right down here, this is my favorite thing. We actually upgraded our RV to get the uh, Glow Step Revolution. These steps are amazing. And Rachel keeps asking me to put this in here. Look at this, you got your foot uh, brush to make sure you're not bringing everything up inside. While we're in there, take a look at this floor. No problems, no carpet, anything like that. Gonna be nice and easy to clean. Some nice off-road tires. Take a look at these beautiful tires. It's gonna be great for going off-road. You got a little tray here on the side. The Rove Light 14 LEV is all electric. Super, super nice. Right here in the back, we got some fresh water connection. Here's our city connection, low point drain. Here's our outlet. And if you take a look over my head, we've got a nice awning. I mean, not a lot of these units do have awning, so it's really nice to get an awning and something this small. Coming up here in the front, there's a nice label here. This is not a storage compartment, but what you do see in here is some of your battery stuff. So everything is in there that you're gonna need access to. Here's a nice window up towards the front over here. Small unit, but we've got an electric jack. Here's another storage area, probably for some batteries. And take a look at this. We've got a ladder to hang our bicycles and some other things up on top. So that's a nice little feature in here. Coming over here on the side, we've got a place for our solar panels right here, which we did see them inside. We've got our 30 amp right here, cable. Over here, we have our spray port for our external shower. And then down there on the bottom, we do have our a sewer connection. We were so blessed while we were reviewing this unit that we get to talk to the manufacturer. Oh my gosh. First of all, thank you so much for producing such an amazing product. But we wanted to see, could you tell us a little bit more about the details of this unit? Absolutely. Yeah. So my name is Keith Lesson. I'm the national sales manager for Travelite RV. Um, this is the 14 FL EV. It has 400 amp hours. This has a 400 amp hour lithium battery in it. It has a 3000 watt inverter in it. It also has energy management in it. You have 400 watts of solar on the roof and a 300 watt solar blanket you can also man um, 
monitor your battery with your phone through Bluetooth connectivity. And then um, you have an induction cooktop, you have a fireplace for heat, and your AC. You can run all of that stuff off of that system. You don't have any LP in this unit at all. How long can you run the bat, the like your heater and everything on that battery? So they're and gonna the they're, well, they're gonna draw a little different. It's gonna depend on ambient temperatures. It's gonna depend on a lot of things, but four to eight hours depending on the ex ex outside temperatures. So okay, it's hard for us to find a con with your unit here, sir. I, 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 Sorry. I, 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 right? Like, well, <laughs> but can I ask you what is your favorite pro? Because there's so many features about this that I love. I think the 100% thing is the weight on these. The weight in the construction. We didn't. We don't have any wood in the floor, ceiling, or sidewalls of this unit. The floor is a honeycomb composite. The sidewalls are uh, gel coat fiberglass with fire retardant foam between them for the insulation, and then as on the inside. And then we use a two-part epoxy instead of a water-based glue to vacuum bond them together. And that's all aluminum framed as well. So with that, the one-piece fiberglass roof and hitting that weight, I think that's the number one thing. It's really awesome. And I've got to say the price point is really nice. It's hurting our hearts to see <laughs> so many units that are really out of the price point of a lot of newbies. Yeah. But this is a really good entry level for somebody who's, you know, getting started and, and wants to go camp. We think about our kids. We want to pass this on yeah. to the next generation. So is that a consideration for you? It is, absolutely. So um, I have kids myself. That's why we also have a bunk model. Okay, pros and cons. Man, it's hard to find a con. I mean, I, I wasn't being... I wasn't lying. If I was going to go with any con at all, um, maybe this was one of the smaller air conditioning units that I saw. It was a smaller air conditioning You're unit. You're being nitpicky. I am being as nitpicky as possible because I just can't find anything I don't like about this. What's it's, your pro? My pro has got to be the space to sleep on the fact that you have two on both sides you have really nice space so whether it's just a couple a single person or traveling with a child this one makes it possible yeah okay what about you my pro is the whole unit yeah, yeah. right it is the whole unit i mean it's great if you had to ask me one pro i'm gonna have to i'm gonna jump in on yours plots lots of sleeping area lots of sleeping area. okay so cons my initial con was going to be there's no gas so that means that if you need to go out and you want to boondock you don't have gas to run your stove or anything like that but then when we got to speak with the manufacturer to find out you can go four to six hours <laughs> running your air conditioner running your induction on the batteries in there and don't forget you've got solar on the roof you got a solar blanket so you're going to be able to charge stuff that kind of wiped out that con. It like does. I wanted the LP until he told me all that stuff. And I'm like, no, I don't want the LP. I, I want what you've got in here. So the only con I can come up with is the bed's probably, it's it's a it's not a super wide unit. So I'm gonna have to curl my legs up when I'm sleeping. There you go. That That's it. I mean, this unit's a winner. It really and, is. And then when you come in at the weight, of under 2,500 pounds, because, that's amazing. Because I have to think about, do I need to upgrade my car? Vehicles are very expensive. So I want to stay in a really good towing class and not have to upgrade a vehicle. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna do this. We've gone five. Okay. We're gonna go find a bonus. Then we're gonna tell you which one we like. Now this one is gonna be a little bit heavier, but I think what you get with this is going to be the worth it. This one has a gross weight of 3,500 pounds, and we're gonna take a look at the Soul Rover. Okay, so moving up inside. Oh, wow. More of a real bathroom. So we got a wet bath, but look at the size of this wet bath. I can absolutely stand up in this. Now I am five, seven and a half, but I think we've got enough room for well, you to Well, let's check it out. So. Okay, I'm six foot tall, I'm not touching here. And again, this is a wet bath. So if I were to sit down and use a wet bath the way you're supposed to, no problem at all. But the fact that I can climb in here, I really like it. The entire thing is plastic. We're not dealing with any kind of wood that we have to worry about. It's This is a great unit, I love this. Let's continue it on. This kitchen doesn't disappoint for the size of this unit. So over here, you have a really nice sized sink. Nice little fridge there, and that's gonna be a 12 volt. Now you do have a stove top, which is really nice. And instead of a worthless oven, you have a microwave, which is really nice. Look at all of the use of space here. We got plenty of storage here, more storage down here below. Look at this. I mean, just lots of storage for this little tiny unit. Take a look at us up here. Got more here. Look at the mood lighting. 
We've got some speakers up there. Look at this, just lots of places to shove everything. We've got an entertainment system over there. Obviously that we have a black and a gray tank thing. There's our little uh, box. So we've got pieces for our bed right there. Nice television. So that's gonna become probably like a, a queen size type bed. I like the spinning table so that you can sit how you need to. Plenty of storage. Look at all these windows. You're gonna really be able to enjoy a campsite like going to be on and backing up to the water. This is a really nice unit that you, you don't have to upgrade your vehicle for in order to tow, which is nice and you're getting a lot of amenities. Another big pro for this unit is no shaker box. This is an actual air conditioning unit. So I really like this. So let's start off right up here in the front of this unit. Look at this nice big glass piece you have to get gorgeous views when you're parked. Um, down here, we're gonna have our propane is gonna be right there. Two tanks on our propane. I love the use of this space. So we don't have our propane out here. And what that means is you've got some cargo space here. You can strap down a tote here. And these are nice heavy duty steel bars. But the fact that you can put some stuff here, a nice little storage tote or something as you're going down the road, this is a great little feature. Now we do have an electric tongue jack. That is always a bonus. Continuing along the outside. So here we have our heater over here. Here is our tank drain. Uh, we got, look at these tires, nice size tires here. These are Westlake's 235-75-15s. This is definitely made for off-road. We've got some LED lighting over here on the tires. Here we have our cable, solar connection. Here's our 30 amp hot water heater. Over here, we're gonna have our uh, water fill. Outdoor shower coming along in the back. Look at this bumper. We do have some manual stabilization jacks, LED lighting here, another great big window. And I do love the whole logo for the Rover. Over here, we have a little bit of storage down here. Actually, a lot of storage, again, for a small unit, lots of storage. And then, of course, we do have a nice awning up here. Okay, pros and cons. Well, actually, before pros and cons, let's take a look at the price. We got, this is the Soul Eclipse. MSRP 42,282. Buy now 39,361. Okay. Pros and cons. There's a lot of pros to this unit. I love the configuration of the inside space. I particularly like that bathroom. That bathroom is really, really nice, especially since you are in a little unit. I don't feel like you feel like you're in a little unit. Okay. What about for you? What's a pro? Oh my gosh. There, there's so many pros in here. Um, Oh, I'm trying to think of what my favorite pro is. I'm going to say the whole kitchen area. I mean, this this is a big unit with a small amount of weight to it. Yeah. It, it's a very big unit. Lots of features in there, full bathroom. You've got a kitchen area. Actual air conditioner. A, actual air conditioning. Like the whole unit is a pro. Now, How about a con? Yeah, a con for me, I mean, I'm going to be nitpicky because I have to understand that this is a very small unit, but I felt like even though I really liked the front tanks being in that little space and you get two tanks, I thought it was kind of cheaply made with the plastic, a little bit, you know, not great as far as the latches on the outside. That's a nitpicky con, especially considering I don't like the normal plastic cover for yeah. the one we have anyway. In fact, I've even lost a little adapter, but I, I see what you're saying. Okay, so for me, again, I'm gonna have to nitpick the cons as well in that it's gonna be the bed. Like, honestly, for me, for a unit this size, I don't need a table. Just make it one big bed area. Okay. That's it. So we are all packed up, getting ready to head home from the Florida RV Super Show. And we almost forgot to wrap up the five RVs under 3,000 pounds gross weight. Yeah, we got it in the video somehow, Joe. Okay, so we saw a bunch of different ones. We did continue looking, and honestly... I did not find any other RVs under 3,000 pounds that would knock off one of the ones that we listed in the video. We were going to actually put one of the A-frame ones in there, like the pop-up A-frames, but we got run off by someone because he didn't like our con. The salesman heard our con, and he got really mad at us and ran us off. But we're going to be nice and not tell you the name of that company. Right. 
Um, but we did see some amazing ones. Plus, we gave you guys a bonus that's slightly over 3,000 pounds gross weight. But here's the moment of truth. Which one is your favorite one? Which one would you buy if we were in the market for an RV under 3,000 pounds? Super easy for me. The New Camp Barefoot. That thing is as cute as it I can be. I knew she was going to say that. It is super comfortable for the size. Like, I did not feel claustrophobic. I felt absolutely like it was luxury. It was cute. It was cute. fun. Cute. It had lots of windows. I mean, it was just going to be a really fun experience. Shouldn't practical take precedence over cute? Not if you're glamping. It's $48,000. Money well spent, in that, my opinion. That is like double that we paid for this RV. Hey. I mean, $48,000. You didn't ask me to be reasonable. You it doesn't even have a bidet in it. What my favorite is. Okay. So, I, I knew she was going to pick that one just based on cuteness. I personally don't think cuteness should come into play. I think it's all about function. Okay. But let us know down in the comment section what's more important, cuteness or functionality. Well, you picked me for cuteness. I picked you because I knew you were going to be a good wife and mother. <laughs> you are cute, though. Well, thank you. Okay, so for me, it's going to be the Rove Light from TLRV. Okay. That is amazing. And I think it hits all the buttons so i do think it's good looking i think it it's a, it's a very pretty rv i think the weight that it's coming in at is amazing i mean well under 30 uh, under three thousand pounds gross weight um it's got everything it's got a nice size bathroom it's all electric you don't even have to worry about propane and it's got enough lithium in there that you could run your air conditioner you can have your stove going at least for a couple of hours it's got solar you can add more solar it checks all the boxes and it comes in more than ten thousand dollars less than the one that you like hey, i mean tell me where i'm wrong here. you are not wrong it is definitely going to be more functional um than it is cute it's kind of like how I chose you, right? <laughs> so I wasn't very cute. You're was, cute. You're you just cute picked me for you picked me because I could cook. There you go. You need some function, right? And I, like you said, this is still a good looking unit. Good looking unit. Okay. Well, let us know in the comment section which one was your favorite. I can tell you this with the Rove Light from TLRV. If we and I would love to do this at some point. If we were to travel cross country, if we were gonna do, let's say, a two month, three month, maybe even a one month, just tour of all of the national parks, I would buy that Rove Light if I had $35,000. Um, I would buy that Rove Light for that purpose. Yes, it's smaller than Eleanor, but when you look at the functionality when you look at the length, the size, you're going to be able to park anywhere. Right. The fact that you don't have to worry about, like, you know, having to propane, the fact that everything's electric, the fact that you can run your air conditioner if you absolutely need to. Huge selling point. Everything about that to me is perfect. I mean, yes, the holding tanks are going to be smaller than Eleanor, but, you know, you would, if you were doing that trip, you're going to stop every couple of days or a day or whatever. And I think it would be great if you're going to go out into some of the, you know, BLM lands and things like that. Just because of the size of it, I think it's perfect. And pretty much any car, you can tow that no problem with a half ton pickup. You don't have to have like a three quarter ton or a one ton pickup. Like anything is going to be able to tow that. I, I think it's just a great unit. But let us know which one is your favorite one. Now, if you like seeing videos like this, please do us a favor. Make sure you hit that like button down below. It really does help build the channel, but it also lets us know what kind of videos you guys are looking to see. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Until next time, happy, happy camping. camping.